the, the extent of the migration under Boris Johnson was so much larger than anything else, even from the Blair, that it's just not possible for the state to keep up with who's living here. Hello and welcome to Spectator TV. I'm Michael Simmons, the Spectator's data editor. This week, population projections from the ONS were released, showing that the United Kingdom is already larger than France. By 2032, the population will have grown by nearly 5 million to over 72 million people. But what's really interesting is, as this graph shows, births and deaths are going to cancel each other out, which means that the entirety of that population growth is coming from immigration. And the ONS say that in the decade between 2022 and 2032, that 10 million people will have arrived in the country. But migration may have actually already peaked. If you dig behind the ONS's projection figures, you actually see that their highest year for migration was in 2023. So the peak for migration may have already happened. Perhaps the real story though is, can we even trust these figures? Do we know how many people are even in the country? If you take one example, whenever the ONS do their net migration estimates, they're often revised up by hundreds of thousands of people. And as this um, animation from the Spectator's data hub shows, the population forecasts change drastically every time they're redone. And joining me to discuss all this today is the journalist Ed West. Ed, thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure. Do you know how many people live in Britain? Uh, no. I mean, I could guess. What would be your guess? Well, uh, the official number is, I think, 68, and it was 67 mm -hmm. uh, the last census. I would guess 70 so I'm, million. I'm like a moderate conspiracy theorist in this. Some people say it's much more than that, but I think... I think it's probably one or two million over. Million over. Yeah. And when you wrote about this sort of phenomenon on your Substack uh, last year, you mentioned that one of the first sort of conspiracy theories that set this off was to do with how much we're spending in Tesco. Yeah. Can you take us through that? Well, the, the, the Tesco truth is that this was an online uh, thing, and it was, I think, around 2015. They were saying that you can tell how many people um, actually live in Britain because, like, Tesco knows, because they're the major supermarket, they have till receipts of basic necessities and since these are things everyone gets they can basically calculate how many people live in the country and and their argument was um it wasn't as i think the official figure was 65 or 63 million at the time uh and some people said it was a size sort of 80 or 90 or 100 million mm -hmm. and um this was uh initially sort of debunked and it was kind of comic talking points i think buzzfeed did a sort of debunking and um since then there have been, especially since the pandemic, there have been a number of indicators that the actual population is much higher than we suspect. And what, what are some of those? Because obviously the, the Tesco stuff, as you say, like some of it was debunked. We, we, you know, as a society, ideally would not be relying on, on Tesco to work right. out what the population is. What are some of the official sources and what's wrong with them? Um, well, the problem is the, the ONS don't know. Uh, and I think they would be openly saying they don't know entirely. Um, and there were a couple of things during the, the pandemic. Uh, the number of people who are registered as taking a vaccine, I believe, was four million more than the actual population of England, uh, which would sort of cause concern because people don't go and get the vaccine more than they have to. Yeah. Um, there was also NHS England. The number of people registering uh, for GP was about six million higher than there are officially in England. And obviously there may be fraud in a, in a lot of these cases. Sure. And in many cases, people might just be registered twice and haven't, and the system hasn't picked up on it. Mm -hmm. But um, there are also uh, a number of other issues. Most recently, um, well, the, the Telegraph estimated uh, this month, I think, that the illegal immigration population of London is about one in 12. It might be, full fact say that might be wrong, it might be one in 13. Mm -hmm. Uh, and some people have disputed that, but I think the number is probably uh, certainly high. Yeah. And certainly probably one in 20 would be the lowest estimate. On this number that uh, the, the Telegraph used from, I think it was from a report for Thames Water, where they, where they came right. up with so, this Yeah, water is another thing. Yes, exactly. And uh, they came up with one in 12. If it really was as high as that, wouldn't we sort of more like visibly see it. I mean, I, I would think that if one in 12 people in London really was here uh, illegally, there'd be, for example, there'd be the sort of scenes of like homeless camps that you see in other sort of European cities like Paris, for example. But well, we I mean, don't have that to the same extent in London. Um, well, I mean, if you, if you go to the Strand, there are sort of lots of people queuing up and it's quite dystopian. Mm -hmm. uh, you could go to uh, the area around Warren Street in Houston, there's a sort of homeless encampment. I mean, I think there is certainly a massive... Uh, 
uh, kind of, there are indicators that we are poorer than the official metrics would have, which would be an indication that there are actually more people living yeah. in, you know, there are, it's known lots of people are living in sheds, for example. If you've ever had any, um, anyone who's ever tried to buy a garage will know the council are, will always take an interest because lots of people who live in garages, for instance. There, there have been a number of cases where landlords have been um, convicted for massive overcrowding. People, like 40 people living in three bedroom houses. I think there are a bit, lots of, parts of the country, especially parts of London, the poorer parts, which are obviously much more overcrowded than we imagine. Mm. And, um, you know, it's kind of, some of it's quite Dickensian. So, you know, the main thing that people think is a kind of indicator, as well as um, sort of shopping tills, uh, there are even people, you know, talk about the water, they talk about the quality of um, phone receptions being indicated, because there are, there are far more phone accounts than there should be. And obviously, lots of people can have more than one account, so it's hard to know. Uh, but most of these things come down to a basic uh, inability of the state to account who is coming in and who is coming out. I mean, there's no question of that. And do all uh, these all these sort of examples and indicators that you point to, do they all sort of show it going in the di- the same direction? I.e., we're off by undercounting. There's no. Yeah, there's, we're definitely we're not under. I so mean, it's it's yeah. clear that the the population is larger than we think. It's just that we don't know how much larger. Yeah, because there aren't huge numbers of people secretly escaping from, uh, you know, even from the Labour government. Of course. But there, are, there are lots of people coming. We know, uh, well, partly it's because our way of counting people going in and out is very is very primitive. Uh, and and it, a lot of it was to do with just sort of head counts at airports where they would randomly sample a, a very small number and sort of uh, guess a wide number from that. But when, when, you know, back in between 2015 and 2017, there were an estimated uh, 500,000 people who had just gone missing. They'd gone in with no idea if they'd left. They, I mean, and they had no right to be here. Yeah. And there were another 200,000 people who had left who the state didn't know had actually been here in the first place. So judging from that, it, it suggests that we really don't have much of an idea. Could we do things, you know, better to have an idea? So countries like Sweden have a sort of na- uh, a national like population register. Obviously, 20 years ago, the, the idea was muted to have an ID card system. Right. Should we be doing something like that so that the state has a proper idea of, or a more accurate idea of who, not just how many people are here, but who specifically is here? So our, our system really relies on sort of trust and consent in a way that... So the, the ONS do surveys, for example, in many countries, these are mandatory. Um, but the British, it's always been a sort of voluntary thing because it was assumed that people would mm-hmm. sort of, you know, do the right thing. And I filled in one of these ONS surveys in the past um, where they call up random people. But also stuff like the census. The idea, the census is obviously not picking up a lot of stuff. The census relies on people being truthful about their, their status. Um, and obviously there are huge incentives for people not to be, especially if they're li- living here without the proper... Uh, legal right to then you know why would you fill it in oh yes by the way I've got 10 illegal immigrants living in my house I mean you wouldn't do that would you and and on that census point obviously the the last census was carried out in the spring of 2021 right and it was during the the COVID pandemic and lockdowns and also it crucially I think happened before the sort of Boris wave of migration so some people have said that we actually need uh, an emergency census maybe next year or in two years time rather than waiting that full 10 year period yeah that has been um that has been raised as an issue I mean this is the point of Sam Sam Bidwell made in his article um that really we we, the the extent of the migration under Boris Johnson was so much larger than anything else even uh, under Blair that it's just not possible for the state to keep up with who's living here I mean, I think a mode of census kind of sounds, um, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. I, I don't know whether the government's going to be keen on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, uh, the question of ID cards, I was, I mean, I used to be, I suppose everyone gets less libertarian as they get older, don't they? But yeah. I mean, I was very much against it because I thought it was a kind of like continental thing. And you thing, could but... say we, we already live in, you know, one of the most sur- surveilled right, yeah. states um, in, in Europe. If, I mean, a friend of mine tried to get a cutlery set the other day and he had to show a picture to Amazon. <laughs> of your face to make sure you're over 18. So, I mean, uh-huh. it's kind of bizarre. We are incredibly regulated in some ways, but, uh, you know, the states, you know, Sam said, I think was the state's what big brother's watching, but he's not counting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think these things are kind of very basic. I mean, I think the, the issue of, 
Partly the issue of illegal immigration is uh, one that many people in, in government and in the system generally aren't particularly keen to tackle. I they think it's a right-wing talking point. Um, they think it would be bad for the economy to deal with it. Uh, it's just, it's a hassle. It's really difficult. And is there is there something inherently kind of un-British about it? Because obviously, you know, Brexit and various political movements since then have, have capitalised on uh, people's justified fears about um, immigration and illegal immigration. But then at the same time, we saw that when different political leaders have taken a more hard line approach, so for instance, Theresa May had the the go home vans, there's that sort of outcry against it. What do you think the the actual mood of the British people is on? I I mean, I think the the go home vans were very uh, typical of the kind of completely wrong approach, which was to speak very harsh languages, harsh language but actually not really do anything about it. I think you should be, you know, nice and kind and welcoming, but you should actually enforce the law quite ruthlessly. I mean, if you go to Japan, they they take... Um, I mean, I know this is coming to Europe as well, was come to parts of Europe, but things like the fingerprints, and you have a little... They make sure they count you in and out. They're all very welcoming, but they make sure in the little video before and say, if you commit any crimes or if you try to sell drugs, you're in big trouble. Um, and that's sort of... That's a much better way of set... set you know, the, the van thing was a kind of gimmick. Mm-hmm. Um which I just don't think is very effective. I don't think, I mean, if you want to be twee and British about it, and I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not saying you're twee, but I mean, um, if you want to <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, no. <laughs> if you want to start British values, you know, it does seem a bit um, coarse, and like even, dare I say, vulgar. To, so to you, wouldn't, the around. you wouldn't want Britain to sort of take inspiration from Donald Trump 2.0's approach, which is, you know, to be very hard line about illegal um, immigration as soon as he came to office. I mean, no, I mean, I think, uh, I think you should enforce the law. If people come here illegally, they should be, they should be removed. I mean, there are obviously exceptions. If someone has been, um, you know, if someone's been living in the country and has ne- never committed a crime and has been a, a good citizen, then they can apply for an exception. They should, you know, they could write to the king and asking um, to be allowed to stay. But as, as a general rule, yes, I think it's totally fair that people who don't, who don't do things the normal way. I mean, that is even in itself a kind of signal. If someone cheats the system in getting in, they're not, they're less likely to be a good citizen going forwards. So you've already set, you know, it's like a bad precedent for their behaviour. And if we were to have um, a, a crackdown, if the government wanted to take a more um, hardline approach to immigration in general, do we, given what we've, you know, been discussing today, do they actually have the tools to do that? I mean, could they go and find the potentially million, two million people in the country that we, we, we don't know are here and aren't meant to be here. If if these surveys are not working, could the government even do it? I don't see why not. I mean, it's, as, it's very hard. For example, we, I mean, this is why the, I, the ID cards, it's very hard to get by in things like employment and um, housing if um, the ID card system is in place because you, you can't really continue to function in society. Yeah. I mean, the only, the only area I would say there shouldn't be any ID checks is health, because I think if someone's having a heart attack, just like go and see a doctor, um, rather than you know worry the doctor might have you deported. Um, but otherwise, I don't think these, these things are, are that difficult. You know, we are surveyed in so many different ways. You know, we, we are the surveillance capital of the world outside China. <clears throat> um, and although, that is the bad thing, generally, in many ways. It does allow the state to kind of take action. You know, I just think this is one of the problems when people say, oh, there's so many. It's like, okay, but the, the, more, the, the more we hang around, do nothing about it, those numbers go up. It just gets harder and harder. So you're pushing the problem down the road. And, um, you know, if, if these do things... The, 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 for example, the problem with the, the measurement things, if you measure something better, you have a better idea of what kind of services can be provided. Because the population goes up, you need... Um, more hospitals, you need more schools potentially, blah, blah, blah. and most of all, you need more housing. And if the population goes up, and if housing numbers don't go up, then the cost of housing goes up. And um, you know that is an existential crisis right now in Britain. And I, you know, I think illegal immigration is obviously adding to it. If it's created a situation where um, you know sort of slum landlords are, you know, using this as got to increase the market. And and lastly, so you. You, you seem to suggest that, you know, that maybe an ID card system would be a potential solution to this problem. Better measuring would be a solution to this problem. These are the solutions. But do you think the government is ever going to do anything about it? Or is this just going to be pushed into long grass forevermore? 
I think a lot will depend on, on actually Trump. I mean, and this is something I wrote about this week, is that lo- most of the countries in Europe are very frustrated by the inability to do certain things. Um, in many cases, it's human rights laws have stopped. Even Denmark, which has been very effective in many ways, uh, is frustrated by the same problems. So is Italy, uh, so is Britain. So we're all sort of watching Trump to see if that happens. I mean, America has far more illegal immigrants. Um, and again, the, the problem is that the more illegal immigrants you have, the, the higher numbers of tough, ca- hard cases there will be as well. Um, and it makes it harder for the state to discriminate between people who should absolutely be removed and the kind of borderline cases where a bit, where a bit of mercy is shown. Um, I don't know how that's going to work out in the States, but I think everyone in, in Europe is going to watch it. I, I don't believe, you know, if you go through history, um, far more primitive states than ours have been able to do with this. I mean, if you look back, you know, the mid-19th century, Karl Marx arrived in um, in Britain on the boat from Belgium. Everyone on board that ship, they were all noted. Everything about them was noted. The, the state knew exactly who was on that boat, and they made a note of it. I don't think, if the mid-19th century British state can do that, I don't think it's, it's really that hard for us to do today. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome.